Hey, good morning everybody. Today is Tuesday, July 5th, 2016. My name is Cliff Backus and this is your PushButtonStockTrading.com daily video market review. Before we get started this morning, I want to note that I will be leaving on vacation after the close of business today. There will be no more video market reviews until I get back. The next video market review is going to be on July 13th. I will see you then. But before we start, as a friend of mine frequently asks, if I was stranded on a desert island, what would I need? Well, I'd need three pieces of software. Highgrowthinvestors.com, freestockcharts.com, and Marketsmith. Marketsmith is a set of investment research tools for mastering the market, offering a set of extremely robust stock screeners, charts, and pattern recognition. More importantly, we use Marketsmith to generate our stock checklist, which we use to develop our universal watch list. Take a free trial of Marketsmith. Next, we have freestockcharts.com, which is a Warden Brothers product and has all the versatility of their TC2000 program on an a la carte basis. These are the charts we use in our daily video market review. I use the premium version, but they also offer an advertising driven free version. And lastly, I would need highgrowthstock.com, HGSI. HGSI is a remarkably versatile product that I use for analyzing and screening data. The Spectrum Analyzer is an HGSI product, and you can get a one month free trial of highgrowthstock.com and you don't even need a credit card. And that's our commercial for this week. Okay, much of what we do at Push Button Stock Trading is based in part or in full on William O'Neill's classic book, How to Make Money in Stocks. O'Neill utilizes the acronym CANSLIM to identify the important elements of what he's looking for in a trade. So let's take a quick look at that. The C in CANSLIM stands for current quarterly earnings and sales, and reminds us that we should be looking for stocks that have a minimum of 25% year-over-year increases in quarterly earnings and or sales, and preferably accelerating earnings or sales. The A in CanSlim stands for annual earnings and reminds us that we should be looking for stocks that have an average of at least 25% annual earnings growth over the past three to five years. The N in CanSlim stands for new, new products, new management, or perhaps new market conditions. The N reminds us that we need something new and exciting to sustain longer term profit. The S in CanSlim stands for supply and demand and reminds us that we want to favor stocks that have an average daily volume of at least 500,000 shares and trade at least 140% of their average daily volume on the day that they break out. The L in CanSlim stands for leader or laggard. It's important that we identify where the leadership in the market is. We'll come back to that in a little bit. The I in CanSlim stands for institutional sponsorship and reminds us that we want to find stocks that the institutional or professional fund managers are accumulating. And finally, the M in the CanSlim acronym stands for market and reminds us that According to research, 75% of all stocks will follow the market. It's critical for our success that before we begin trading, we understand the current trend in the market. Okay, as we noted, the L in CanSlim stands for leader or laggard. It's important that we identify where the leadership in the market is. To that end, we use HGSI, High Growth Stock Investors Spectrum Analyzer, to identify the market leadership on a daily basis. So let's get started with that. Friday of the top 100 most powerful stocks in the most powerful industry groups, 17 came from precious metal mining, 6 from packaged foods, 5 from large pharma, 5 from biotech, and rounding out the top 5 we had medical devices, oil and gas services, defensive primes, real estate investment trusts, and healthcare supplies with five stocks each in the most in the 100 most powerful stocks in the most powerful industry groups. These may be good places to look for leadership in this market going forward. 
Let's take a quick look at the NASDAQ composite today. Friday, the NASDAQ composite closed up 19.9 points or 0.41%. We closed at 48.62. And notice how the NASDAQ wasn't quite able to close above this 1% envelope around its 21 day exponential moving average. If it were to close above that envelope, we would have gone from a don't buy signal to a buy signal on the NASDAQ. But because we didn't, we're, we still maintain a don't buy signal on the NASDAQ composite. Trading volume on Friday, as you might expect, was fairly light. Friday was the day before a long holiday weekend and typically traders leave early. For you followers of William O'Neill, we are in a confirmed uptrend on the market and we have been since June 29th. Right now, our market timing signal, as we noted, was is on a don't buy signal. But our GMA, which I'll explain a little bit about later, is currently positive. The positive GMA, or greater moving average, along with the don't buy signal, gives us an aggressive buy signal on the NASDAQ, indicating that the most aggressive traders among us can begin to put money to work but more conservative traders should continue to accumulate cash. Right now the NASDAQ appears to be bracketed by support down here in the 4678 area and resistance up here in the six, uh, 4969 range. But hopefully we should see a good deal of support from both the 200 day moving average which we show in black and the 50 day moving average which we show in red here. Let's take a look at what the S&P 500 is up to. But before we do that, stocks continued to push mostly higher in light pre-holiday volume on Friday. Both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are trading above their 50 and 200 day moving averages, a bullish sign. Before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about our greater moving average add-on signal, or GMA. The GMA compares the number of stocks in the S&P Composite 1500 that are trading above their 9-day moving averages to the number trading above their 50 days. When the number of stocks above their 9-day moving average is greater than the number above their 50, the GMA generates an add-on signal which, in conjunction with our primary signals, buy, don't buy, and sell, gives us our margin or aggressive buy signals. That noted, Friday, the S&P closed more than 1% above its upwardly sloping 21-day exponential moving average, which along with an upward sloping 10-day moving average, is our definition of a buy signal. Combine the buy signal with our GMA, and you get our most aggressive timing signal, a margin signal. The NASDAQ has yet to close 1% above its upwardly sloping 21-day exponential moving average, and so remains on a primary don't buy signal. When we combine that don't buy signal with the GMA, we get an aggressive buy signal on the NASDAQ. The margin signal on the S&P is our most aggressively bullish signal and indicates that aggressive traders can leverage their portfolios utilizing margin. More conservative traders should be working toward fully invested. An aggressive buy signal on the NASDAQ indicates that our most aggressive traders can buy stocks but shouldn't be employing margin at this point. More conservative traders should continue to accumulate cash. Investors.com is indicating a confirmed uptrend in the market. Pick your poison. Meanwhile, our new swing timing model is now trending positive, allowing us to begin to buy our swing timing strategy. Friday, advancing issues bettered decliners by about 7 to 4. New highs swamp new lows and are actually in overbought territory. According to our Ramosi ratio, large capitalization stocks bettered small and are now outperforming on a 10-day moving average basis. Bulls prefer to see small caps outperform. We've seen significant structural damage to the market that I would expect to take a few sessions of backing and filling to reverse. But we're now on a margin signal on the S&P and an aggressive buy signal on the NASDAQ. Bulls can become a bit more aggressive on the long side, but as always, should keep their stops in place on any remaining positions. Okay, 
Friday, the S&P 500 was up 4.09 points or 0.19%. We closed at 2102.95, bettering the psychologically important 2100 level. Note how on Friday, and actually on Thursday, the S&P closed above, at least 1% above, its 21-day exponential moving average, which gives us a buy signal. That combined with our GMA gives us our most aggressive signal, which is a margin signal on the S&P 500. The margin signal indicates that aggressive traders can leverage their portfolios utilizing margin, more conservative traders should be working toward fully invested. As you'd expect yesterday or Friday, trading volume was well below average. For you followers of William O'Neill, we are in a confirmed uptrend on the S&P 500 and have been since June 30th. Right now, the S&P appears to be bracketed by support down here in the 2025 area and resistance up here in the 2116 range. Okay, let's talk about swing trading. Swing trading is a faster, shorter term form of trading than can slim trading. In swing trading, we'll attempt to always trade in the direction of the short term market as defined by the relationship between the NASDAQ composite and its five and 10 day simple moving averages. Our swing timing model has four signals based on those relationships long, trending positive, trending negative, and short. Swing trading utilizes a much shorter term setup than can slim. Those setups, both long and short, are short term consolidations, flags, and bounces. These setups can be as short as five days. Our swing trading targets are typically going to be a 10% profit and a 3% initial stop loss. Swing trades typically last up to 10 days and require strict adherence to our rule sets. So let's take another look at our NASDAQ composite. Friday, the NASDAQ closed well above its 10-day simple moving average, which we show here in green, its 5-day simple moving average, which we show in pink. But notice how the 10-day is trading above the 5-day. That gives us a trending positive signal. When the five day moves above the 10 day, that'll give us a buy signal. Right now, the NASDAQ is trending positive, which indicates that we can begin adding positions to our swing, tra swing trading portfolios. Friday saw one more swing trading stock breakout. DY broke out of a short term consolidation at 46.37 but immediately retreated back into that formation and is threatening its stop in the 8787 area. DY has a price target of 99.65. Other recent breakouts, FN, IBP, and SIMO may also be of interest to swing traders. For more information on swing trading, please contact me. My contact information is on the home page. That's about all I have for today. If you want to talk about any of the stocks mentioned today or any of our market strategies, please feel free to give me a call, drop me an email, or make an appointment. Come by the office, see what we're up to. Contact information is on the home page. Please take a minute to go to our subscription page and subscribe to Push Button Stock Trading. You can also follow us on Twitter at Push Button Stock. Again, my name is Cliff Backus. That's your daily video market review. Have a safe and profitable day. Keep your stops in place, and I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay tuned for our important disclaimers. All the best. Disclaimers. Push-button stock trading video market review is produced and edited by Clifford B. Backus. Mr. Backus is a senior vice president of investments, technical analyst, portfolio manager, and partner with the investment firm of O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated. Video market review is produced solely for the benefit of our clients, friends, and colleagues. Anything written, stolen, and or plagiarized in this publication is done without malice. 
Further, the analysis and opinions expressed in this publication are strictly those of the editor and not of O'Hannison Liqueurs Incorporated, its affiliates, subsidiaries, or any of the officers or employees of O'Hannison Liqueurs Inc. On that note, we submit the following. The analysis calculations and evaluations presented herein are based on data and assumptions O'Hannison Liqueurs Incorporated believes to be accurate. O'Hannison Liqueurs Incorporated makes no representation that such analysis or calculations are accurate or that such valuations represent levels at which actual trades may occur. This report has been prepared from original sources except where otherwise noted and data we believe to be reliable. O'Hannison Liqueurs Inc., its affiliates and subsidiaries and or their officers and employees or their families may from time to time acquire, hold, or sell a position in the securities mentioned herein. Moreover, opinions may differ from one entity to the next. If we are used in connection with the purchase or sale of any security discussed in this report, we may act as principal for our own account or as agent for both the buyer and the seller. Push button stock trading is dedicated to the education of friends, clients, and paid subscribers. Push button stock trading is an information service only. The information provided herein is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell stocks of any kind. Push button stock trading is created to aid subscribers in making informed investment decisions based wholly or in part on technical analysis. It's possible that at this time or some subsequent date, the editors of push button stock trading may own, buy, or sell the investments presented. All investors should consult a qualified professional before making any investment. The information provided has been obtained from sources deemed to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed as to the accuracy or completeness. The editors of Push Button Stock Trading make every effort to provide timely information to subscribers, but cannot guarantee specific delivery times due to factors beyond our control.